Hello, and welcome back to my living room. And today we're going to talk about how to build a superpower in the 21st century, because it's indeed a superpower if you really think about it. The only thing that's sort of stopping most people from really getting the most out of reading is simply a lack of focus. And a lot of people have asked me on Instagram or over email, and they're just kind of like, you know, I want to read, I want to read more, but I can't focus. You know, how do you build this thing called focus? How do you capture this think of focus how do you just sit down for like two hours and just read through a thing and how do you just get enjoyment out of reading you know because focus is not just a problem of like i'm going to read more but focus is actually a tool for you to derive more enjoyment out of reading so in this video really quickly some tips on how to build this elusive thing called focus which really is a superpower in the 20, 21st century tip number one which is kind of counterintuitive but then again it's not counterintuitive at all is to exercise now so many people on the internet have told you to exercise to exercise but as brainy people you know as people that are like really up in their heads all the time somehow that equation doesn't make sense and i don't exactly know why it didn't make a lot of sense to me when it was first um professed to me but then i did some sort of like digging into my memory and I realized that the reason why I was such a competent reader in high school was that I simply was, I was also a good runner. I would dedicate early mornings to long jogs. And I remember it was like over the weekdays when I had school, it was like two kilometers every, every morning. You know, it's not a long distance. It's not something substantial. And over the weekend, because I loved um, running so much, uh, I would run six kilometers every morning, you know, over the weekends. And that's, you know, in retrospect, that was the thing that really kept me sane over over high school, over the intensive studying um, that I had to do for high school before I got into university. But then I landed in university and then the readings got in the way. But counterintuitively, I realized that when I wasn't exercising, when I wasn't putting in that physical strain on my body, my mind would just carry so much intellectual rubbish that some days I could barely think straight. And it took me a year of not exercising to realize, holy crap, you know, there's this whole thing called moving your body. And because brainy people like to think that their body is just carrying this thing around. You know, this thing is around all the time. You have to carry this thing around. And this is the only thing that matters. But, well, in fact, you need this for this to function better. So recently, I sort of clicked back into that routine of running every morning. Not over, you know, any crazy distances. It's more like um, maybe 1.2 kilometers every morning. And then... And in one afternoon, just recently, I sat down and I was able to read 80 pages of an academic article, which I wasn't able to do if I wasn't exerting myself physically. So embrace the paradox. And I really don't think it's that much of a paradox. You're a human being and you're not above exercising. And in fact, one of the best students in my philosophy class, he works at a gym as a personal trainer. And that was the thing that kept them sane and kept them really engaged with the difficult material that you have to read for class. And the second tip here, once you've adopted a very easygoing exercising routine, which is um, you have to realize that you have to tackle reading from a place of starting with the books you love. It sounds simple enough, read what you love and you'll focus better when you're reading these things. Well, it's actually not that simple. The discourse around reading right now, if you're been around on book talk on youtube it's all about finishing things off you know we've turned reading into this you know into this activity where we don't dedicate much time to it where we have to get the most the most bane out of our bucks we try to speed read books we try to you know get through things as much as possible so over time we're really developing this kind of like this hatred for reading it's something that we have to get done to be better well actually the base unit or if you really want to build reading into your life in the long run it has to come from a place of love. You have to love the act of sitting down to pour over a book for a few hours. And that is impossible to do if you don't love the material that you're reading. Forget the idea of like, I have to read this, I have to read that. That book seems a little better than that one. And you read all the Goodreads reviews for all, all these books before you land on a decision, you know, what's the best one out there? This is simply approaching it from kind of like neurotic mentality of like, I have to read the best in the, sh in the shortest amount of time. Whereas if you just approach reading like, hey, that seems really interesting. And you read that book cover to cover without even, even thinking about it. You're like, man, that's a brilliant book. And if it's a high quality book, and this is a point I'm, that I'm going to cover in another video, it should point you towards other books that are also high quality, you know, and then you can use this reference point of the book that you love to, you know, to really engage with it deliberately, spend some time with it. And this good book is going to direct you towards, you know, in the case of nonfiction, at least, it's going to direct you towards 
many other books that you should read. You know, that's fiction. That's you know, that's something related to this piece of book that you love. And over time, you can build up this web of your own, you know, literary tastes of your own taste and your own little clan of books. And through deliberately anchoring yourself down to the process of reading, because the base unit of reading it has nothing to do with how, how high your stack is, it's just sitting down and looking at a page. And if you don't find that process pleasurable, well, maybe just don't read. And the last point here, which is I think the most important point, is that once in a while, you want to challenge yourself with a book that's just a little bit beyond your reading level. And then again, the same problem with this, you know, reading as many books as possible culture, which is that we want to read as much stuff as possible without realizing that most of that stuff could be rubbish. And the metric that we measure quality reading is simply wrong. I don't really care how high your stack is. If you can't tell me how, you know, concretely how those books had impacted you, you're simply not reading them right. And certain books, when they're challenging, when they are just at that sweet level of just a little bit beyond your reading level, they are gonna take longer. You know, you might not read 50 books a year, you might read 20 books, but those 20 books might go on to have a major impact on your life. If you decide to spend a long time on a really you know, difficult piece of literary work, then that's gonna be better for you if you had just read like five, you know, genre fiction novels, you know, on the side. So I really want to urge you to change your metrics here and to sort of like once in a while appreciate the power of a good piece of um, challenging work. And what's gonna happen is that once you build up the stamina, bit by bit, a more challenging material, you don't wanna to go too overboard because you're gonna overwhelm yourself, but select a book that's gonna take you longer to read once in a while to really, you know, strengthen that reading level of yours. And then what's gonna happen is that when you return to some of the easier levels or your the level that you're comfortable with, what you're gonna realize is that you can breeze through those books really easily because you've simply turned yourself into a stronger reader. A very prominent example, so a lot of my personal work when I'm writing papers for university or when I'm really engaging in with like academic papers, these readings are sometimes borderline impossible to understand. But then through that process of really wrestling with them, through that process of, you know, getting my dose of dif difficult reading in once in a while, then when I return to some of the easier academic papers or when I return to like a biography of someone I like or when I return to you know, a book that's a nonfiction book that's not that difficult to read, I was able to read through it so much more quickly and with so much more ease because I've built up that tolerance for sort of like this wrestling process. And the same with focus. You can't build up a good amount of focus or a good, good amount of comprehension if you stick with your general level of reading. What's going to happen is that if you stay there forever, all your books are going to look the same. All your, you know, you're not really advancing. Uh, you're not really building up that really concrete understanding. So what if I chuck you um, a history book next week? You're going to struggle with that because you've never built up that tolerance for, um, for higher intake of information. So once in a while, sit down, remeasure your metrics. Sometimes it's okay to spend, uh, you know, longer periods of time with something that's a little bit more difficult, a little bit, you know, beyond your own reading level to sort of then allow yourself the space to come back down to your normal reading level and find yourself, hey, I can focus better. Hey, I can read this a lot quicker. Hey, my finished stack is a little higher. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna continue to do this process. You're gonna continue to expand your competence in reading. And then next thing you know, um, you you find yourself on a balcony reading a history book like it's nothing. The conclusion here is that to maintain reading as a hobby in the long run, you have to love it. You know, simple, case in point, you have to love it. Otherwise, it's, it's just useless. You're gonna view it as another task on your to-do list, and no matter how many books you've read, it's just simply not gonna make a difference in your life. And a part of what I wanna do here is to continue sharing these tips, really quick tips I'm reading uh, with you guys alongside my extended video essays to really uh, to really take you guys along with me on this journey of me building up my competence in reading. So the end goal here is to turn ourselves into intelligent readers. And thank you for watching this short episode. And I will see you in the next one.